Welcome in, VOD watchers, to part two of Psychonauts 2 with a therapist. I hope you enjoyed part one as much as I did. It was a fabulous, fabulous time. I'm really excited for part two. If you haven't already, I ask that you know leave a comment on part one if there was something that stood out to you, or feel free to leave one on part two. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, check out my other playthroughs, follow me on social media, all that fun stuff. I'm really excited to see what's coming at us here, so we're going to jump right in. Thanks for being with me. If you ever want to catch me live, I stream on Twitch at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time at twitch.tv slash drmick. VODs will be available here on YouTube. All right, let's roll. Dustpan is approaching the front desk. Teacup, come in. Are you there? Hollis. Hmm? Oh, yes. Shoehorn, this is Teacup. I have you on visual. Teacup, this is Dustpan. I'm approaching position one. After you've disabled the side detectors and inhibitors, on your go-ahead, I'll approach the reception desk and distract the clerks. After they're distracted, I'll drop into the office and find the room number that belongs to this key. Just make sure to disable the main van, because my position is close. No need to explain, agents. You do your job, and I'll do mine. Let's keep radio silent so I can concentrate. Understood. Roger that, Teacup. Dustpan out. Okay, these code names are going to be more confusing than anything else. Uh, kind of, Sean. I don't know that I would call it the same process. Hey, uh, maybe we should keep out of Agent Forsyth's, uh, operations theater? Something is really not right with Hollis. What did you do to her? What? Me? Nothing. I just... Made her love gambling? She's fine. She just needs a little space. I cannot take my eyes off this train wreck. You are going to be in so much trouble. Alright, fine. You focus on that. I'm going to focus on getting the job done. <laughs> Congratulations, Steve. Extra large banshee's breakfast. What you doing, Morris? I'll tell you what I'm not doing. I'm not watching the pre-semi-final practice vote to find out who's maybe not going on to the next round of Pop Gladiators. Okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know. Wait, this is a TV, right? <laughs> You're not just some big dark mirror, right? Um, alright. Fireball? I'm guessing I should probably put Fireball... Can't burn that. All right, let's get out of here. Let's do the work. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing in there, Sam? When Agent Forsythe finally blows, this will be the only safe place. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's good on the mission so far. You mean except for our mission commander having a total breakdown? It's not a breakdown. She's just strategizing. Uh-huh. Oh boy, so everybody all talks a big game and then they freak out when the person in charge gets extra stimulated. How oh. did you even ask for such a thing? How the hell do we get out of here? What am I trying to do here? That key we found on Nick's body led us to Lady Loctopus Casino. Is this a delusionist hideout? Do they have the mole in the Psychonauts headquarters? Why did they take Nick's brain? Talk to Hollis. Okay. Stupid television. <gasps> Rasputin, don't sneak up on me like that. Listen, do me a favor and run up to the jet, will you? I need my dowsing goggles. I left them on my seat, I think. You wanted to be on a mission. Now here's your first objective. Fetch my dowsing goggles. Okay, but hurry. Our window of opportunity is closing. All right, I'll be right back. goggles anywhere. I mean, to be fair, I have no idea what they look like. 
I've actually never even heard of dowsing. Oh no. Agent Forsyth, where are you going? Oh, this is getting shady. Oh no, Hollis, what did I do to you? Rasputin, is that you? Mia? Sasha? Agent Forsyth is missing, but don't worry. I'll find her. Hurry, Rasputin. We're in big trouble here. Yes, please find Agent Forsyth right away. I don't know how long I can... Hold on. Uh. I'm on it. Boy, we... There's going to be a hell of a butterfly effect here, isn't there? They have anti-psychic detectors. Hollis must have some way to hide it. Alert. Weak psychic activity detected. Weak? Hmm. Can I shoot the them? Devil's bad water. There we go. Hopefully the casino doesn't have, you know, alarms on those. Maybe I can catch up to her this way. I am Nathan Drake. I was going to play Uncharted, but I don't have to anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, place your bets. Don't worry, Agent Forsyth. I can fix this. Are we seriously going in? Mesdames et messieurs, rien ne va plus. Ladies and gentlemen, no more bets. I did not know we could do that without consent. different But maybe it's not so bad Yikes Okay, a quick word about gambling I know I've talked about this maybe a little bit before but I think it's important to talk about again because we have like when we scrambled her brain, we associated money and risk and like delight. And so now she's open to gambling. Gambling is a ridiculously hard addiction to break. And the reason for that is because gambling has within it what's called intermittent rewards. Intermittent rewards mean that you cannot anticipate when the next win is going to happen. So that means that any roll or any turn could be the time that you win. So even if you lose this one, it doesn't mean that you're going to lose the next one. And our brain is hyper-wired to be sensitive to intermittent rewards. You can actually use intermittent uh, punishment to torture people. So we chase. One of the worst things that can happen to somebody who gambles is for them to win very early on. Which is why a lot of gambling sites, think things like FanDuel, sports betting, etc., will offer you basically a guaranteed win on the first shot. Or they'll give you free money to play with. Because they want you to win immediately so that you think any subsequent time that you play you could win. 
because people who lose several times at the outset believe they're just wasting their money and they'll walk away. So you need people to hit and think that it's possible. Loot boxes are very similar. This is why you might get a really awesome item the first time you open a loot box, and then all the subsequent ones suck, but that means the next one could have the item that you want in it. You are fighting against biology as it relates to gambling addiction, which is why there are specialized gambling addiction treatment centers, because it is something that we can get tied up in very quickly, and it will take people way past whatever limits they ever thought they had. You have to be very very careful. These things are everywhere because of our predisposition to it. So we, this is going to be, uh, we got to be really careful here with how we navigate this with foresight. Uh, all right, my levitation ball. things. Uh, it depends on the person, Loyal. The saddest and most messed up stories I've heard are from casino workers. Yep. We need her to change her mind. I wonder if else is available to us. Let's go get that other half of the brain. For the other bubble that we have. I don't see... Unless we go higher up. Risk. Let's see what's... Let's see what's over here. Agent Foresight? You in here? The representation oh, of the bus. Like this one bit. Oh, she's out of control of the bus. Oh no. So see how her perception of the of the ambulance has even changed? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. Looks like Hollis had a spontaneous change in her worldview. Unrelated to my inappropriate meddling with her thoughts. Oh, man. Who am I kidding? I need to find Hollis's quiet room again and break that bad mental connection I made. Uh... uh yeah, mind stepping aside, buddy? This is an emergency. Heavy sensor crushes thoughts that don't belong. We all, oh, no. man. Big time coping no, strategy. Like a no 
Oh, damn, he hits hard. All right. All right, so we got bad ideas. Big coping strategy. Love that I can attack from my le uh, levitation ball. Yeah. Good thing we're near a hospital, so uh, your ghosts don't have to walk very. Oh, never mind. No, keep trying it. Okay, so... What I love about this is that it is suggesting that because we changed that neural connection that she had, it has changed in some ways the frame of reference she has for everything. So now we're seeing the hospital as a casino. Risk is all of a sudden glitzy. Lots of glamour. Got this thing to be averse to. We've essentially changed her frame for a lot of things, and that's going to have some really adverse effects. This is why, like, you gotta be really careful with... I mean, you could make... I, I, I don't... I hate using this word, because, again, it's overused, but... Like, you could make an argument that what we did was, like, fast-tracked gaslighting. We basically got Forsyth to change so pretty. her so representation wise. of reality based on what we wanted her to believe. And that's pretty scary stuff, man. Like, what we do as Psychonauts gotcha. is crazy delicate stuff. Because this could be used for... Like, the amount of power you have in this is really scary. One of the few ways that people maintain autonomy from their environment is to invest in their own values and uh, mental constructs. And so when you start messing with that, you are really, really strongly manipulating somebody. We're in a position of power here. Deal them in, stat. All right, what do we got? We got this again. Come on, live, damn you, live. Recovery. You did it, Dr. Potts. Call me Jack. Let's go for double or nothing. Woo! <laughs> ah, I love it. All right, so now we're viewing... Now we're viewing life-saving procedures as gambles. And the excitement that comes along with getting it done. Oh, man. Oh, man. Banana. Infection? Ah, oh, dang it. I'm so sorry, Doctor. Ah, oh, well, it can't be helped. <laughs> Some patients are just bad luck. Oh. I gotta think of how I want to talk about this. Luck is a construct that I think does more harm than good when people use it to frame what's going on. If the doctor performs poorly, 
and says, oh, we were just unlucky. That is deferring the accountability that that person has for that moment. If, that, if a person loses thousands of dollars gambling and they say, I was just unlucky, it is moving the accountability away from the fact that really casinos and gambling is rigged against you always. The house always wins. It's how they build big, beautiful casinos. You wouldn't be able to build those if people won. So even good things, when people say, like when, when they do something that's like an awesome accomplishment, they say, oh, I was lucky. It's a deferment of accountability. And luck is not an actual phenomenon. Luck is something that humans have created to create explanations for events that they perhaps don't see as related. Or it's a, it's a way to conceptualize something when you don't want to take the time to actually consider how a thing came to pass. So be really careful with the role that the concept of luck plays in your life and how often you attend to it as a way to defer accountability from where it should be deferred to. I do like how these are all playing cards. This is neat. I don't like the look of these. Mm. Yes, the heart's salvageable, but the rest... Should we fold? No, Marinette. Hold the eight and the queen, and we'll pull yep. for the inside straight. Hmm. I roll. I'll just quickly pop into Hollis's quiet place and fix this mess. High rollers lounge. That's not good. Oh no! Rasputin, what are you doing here? Sorry, I didn't mean to crash your hospital. Casino. Oh, everyone's welcome in the casino. Without gamblers, how else would we make any money? <laughs> <laughs> no, you just can't be up here because it's the High Rollers Lounge. Oh, Wait, shit. Agent Foresight, I need to tell you. Ah! Uh oh. What the It's just the morgue. Huh? Yes, Rasputin? Uh, we got a patient here. Needs emergency access. Sorry. The table minimum in the High Rollers Lounge is, uh, three gazillion dollars. What? How much is a gazillion? More than you got, kid. <laughs> Open up! My patient is dying! He needs fancy drinks, stat! In my opinion, your patient needs an emergency dose of three gazillion dollars. <laughs> Hmm. This is so interesting. Oh. The maternity ward. Welcome. <laughs> One. Oh my God. see where this goes and what's the over under on a delivery date 
Over under January 4th. Careful, Ron. How did you two get in here? We followed you. We thought it would be fun, but... It's full of babies! Come on, genetic we'll lottery. Luck here. We have to have a baby. Or you could just, like, have a happy life together. Oops, looks like the house takes it this time. This time? You mean every time. Come on, lovey, let's try another number. We have to win eventually. Well, this is obviously rigged, right? Adam? Lizzie? Guess they really don't like babies. Who's going to take care of you when you're older? Hmm, maybe we're not betting enough money each time. Hold your bets, the ball is in play. This Ooh, is so I have to dark. Not to stare at that thing. Makes me dizzy. Oh, honey, this is it. Here we go again. And we have a winner. Looks like this time it's double zero. Double zero is the winner. What a lucky break for the house. Well, if you didn't win, now's your chance to fix that with another bet. No! Of all the fiendish, flatulent frauds. Let's try it one last time. Oh, man, that is... Come on. So, you here hoping to get a baby? No. I just love the sound of children crying. Another spin at the wheel. Another last chance for happiness and love. I feel good about this. Honestly, people like us shouldn't have to work this hard. My diaper. It's double zero every time. Goo. Haven't hit the gazillion dollar number yet? Oh, this isn't about the money. We are already so rich. So rich. <laughs> yes, we just want a child. More than anything in the world. But the confounded house always wins. I hate to say this out loud, but I have my suspicions regarding the up and upness of this lowdown dive. Yeah, it's rigged. You're in a casino! This system is rigged. Maybe I could help unrig it. Oh, if you could do that, you could have all the money. Yes, we don't care about that. Because we're so rich. Yes, very wealthy, it's true. But poor in children. Help us win a baby, and you, sir, can have the gazillion dollar prize. And our eternal gratitude. Leave it to me. Let's try the length of our yacht. Spinning time. I'm curious about why Pop they're line. represented as the skulls. If we don't get it this time. I will burn this place to the ground. I think we chose well. I have known. Okay, so. I'm just realizing I start every one of these tidbits with okay, so. Um, this is another really good time for me to talk about cognitive schema. And. Assimilation versus accommodation. And this ties in with the conversation we had about luck here earlier. People go into gambling spaces and often believe that they are different. That they are the exception to the rule. That they somehow have better odds at winning than other people do 
for whatever inductive reason they develop for that, whether they see themselves as more perceptive, whether they see themselves as having a strategy that's better, whatever it may be, or it's just pure ignorance. You stay in a casino and gamble long enough, you will find that it literally is rigged against you. The reason that there are two green spots on a roulette board is to make sure that your shot isn't 50-50 when you bet one of the colors. The reason that odds are minus 110 rather than even odds when you bet sports lines is so that the house recoups an amount. It is always against you. Well, a lot of times people don't like to attend to the reality that they can't beat the house. And so to preserve that pre-existing expectation of themselves that they are better than the system, they will view their experience through, they will assimilate their experience and essentially say, this is rigged. As in, this is unfair, as in, this is an extreme, an extra, uh, a extrane, extraneous, god damn it, whatever word, circumstance. And that I actually am better. And so they will keep going. They might go to a different casino. They might go to a different table. They might, I'm just unlucky. Like, whatever it may be, it preserves the fact that they know better. You don't know better. There are very few people in the world who can make a living gambling very few relative to the greater population who gambles so i say all of this because when they start saying this is this wholly rigged system they're trying to preserve this idea that they know this system better that this system couldn't possibly be screwing them because they've seen other people win or they've won before. That's a very scary mindset to get into. You have to attend to reality when it comes to things like this. Reality is not as fun and interesting as winning at blackjack. Tui, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, friends. Hello, I'm Dr. Mick, licensed couple and family therapist. I have a PhD in human development. This is Game Sessions with a Therapist, where we play cool games, talk about mental health, psychology, therapy, and more in an effort to destigmatize those things and bring information to people who would not otherwise have it in a responsible and ethical way. We are currently playing through Psychonauts 2. It is a blind run, so please refrain from any spoilers or backseating. I use games to analyze various psychological concepts. Tonight we're talking a lot about gambling and intermittent rewards because we're in a casino. So if you have already seen this game or if you haven't seen the game, strap in. It's a really great time. Tui is a wonderful human being. If you all don't follow Rocket Tui, click on her name and make sure that you follow her stream. Thank you for bringing your folks my way. And thank you all for being here. I appreciate it immensely. Net control. Hey, baby. Are you lost? This is so odd. Bet generously. When your child grows up, they'll ask how much you paid. No more bets. Let's spin that wheel. Spin, Les Enfants. Spin. Fingers crossed. And toes. Finally figured out the system. Also, another important point about gambling is there is no actual pattern. A lot of times they will show you what the last rolls were when you're playing roulette. Like they'll show you the last, you know, 15 were red and then there were two black before it and then there was a red and they'll show you the numbers and they'll do all these things. Casinos want you to find pattern amidst actual randomness. Literally every time you spin a roulette wheel and put the wheel, put the ball down, the odds of hitting the number that you put your chip on are exactly the same as they were last time. Red's not hot. Black's not cold. 36 isn't bound to come up soon. It is always chance. But casinos want you to find patterns because the human brain likes that. You can anticipate things. You, can, you think that you can create patterns out of randomness. Basically, what you're trying to do is create rules around actual entropy. Casinos are entropy. And we try to find order in it. And so you could see 
it's double zero on this wheel come up 25 times in a row and some people will think well it couldn't possibly be double zero again because it's come up 25 times in a row yes it can it's the same reason people get messed up when on a multiple choice test they get like four d's in a row they start to they people will actually start to question if their answer to that question is right because they don't believe that four d's should be in a row one of the best ways that you can screw people up when taking a multiple choice test is to make every answer c people will look at that and they will freak out and go it couldn't possibly be that you can actually mess up people's minds because of our desire to find patterns amongst chaos it's fascinating stuff. I thought you switched to YouTube. Glad to see you back here on Twitch. I am streaming on Twitch now full time. All live streams are on Twitch again. And we have a winner. Looks like this time it's double I also zero. live in Vegas, Morbitas, so I feel you. What a lucky break for the house. Well, if you didn't win, yeah, and this is using luck as well. Like to place a bet. Okay, you're in. Good luck. Wait, don't you want to know what my bet is? Oh, well, listen. Just between you and me, it won't make a difference. Who wants a baby? My spiritual advisor told me I should avoid all primes. Huh. Oof. Place your bets, everyone. Hold your bets. The ball is in play. Spinning time. I know you're not supposed to say this. But money really does solve a lot of problems. Ooh, I can't seem to connect to that idea. Guess I need more practice. Wait a minute. Okay, so delight. I don't care how much it costs. If we walk out of here with a baby, it's all been worth it. I wish this were the stock market. At least I know how that system is rigged. <laughs> No more bets. Let okay. <sighs> People put, not everyone, but lots of folks, put a lot of identity and desire into fertility. Many people, they reach a point in their life where they want to have children, and it is something that is of deep importance to them. The way fertility tends to get represented in general is that it's easy to get pregnant. For some people, that's true. For other people, it is not. In some ways, you are playing the biological lottery to an extent. There's so many complex circumstances and factors that go into whether you're able to conceive at a given point in time. One of the most heartbreaking things that happens when people are consistently trying for a child, they're measuring the window, they're trying to reduce the odds into more workable odds that they will have a child when they are attempting to conceive. One of the things that often happens over time is people will get caught up in personalizing that process. They start to wonder if this has something to do with them on a level that is beyond just the physics and biology of it. And that can be incredibly unsettling to folks where they will keep trying, sort of bashing their heads against a wall, trying to make it happen when there may be certain factors that have to be controlled to make it less of a gamble every time they attempt. The unfortunate part about it, particularly in the United States, is that infertility treatment is ridiculously expensive. Like, and rarely covered by insurance. And when you get people personalizing that process, they are making meaning out of an unknown that is very easy to direct that blame to themselves, and it can destroy people and actually affect their biology such that their body even starts to shut down and it's really heartbreaking to watch. So seeing people in this space, looking at pregnancy as a roulette wheel is not entirely untrue. 
There's so many factors, though, that go into you being able to hit it on the nose. It's way harder to get pregnant than people think. It's demoralized. Spin that wheel. <laughs> round and round Especially and when round you have folks that want to have a child who can't have them, and then you have people oh, who don't want them. That just it happens for them. Not the one with the, yes, it's easy. You know. Can't fail now. You're, whether you're able to have a child does not say anything about you as a person. Uh, if you want to stop, we can stop. All right, so we have to figure out how to get. How can we turn these? We figure out what the deal is here with this. Deal. What is this? Let's try it one last time. Can't do it. I can't make a connection with that idea for some reason. Spinning time. Hey now, right, let's no see if I can. On the wheel, baby. Wait, did we bet on the right one? Can we change it? No I way. Grab we can... the wheel. I'm sitting in my own poop, and it's not even warm anymore. And we have a winner! Looks like this time it's double zero. Double zero is the winner. What a lucky break for the house. Well, I'm working on winning that baby for you. Oh, please hurry. Trying to have a baby is so exhausting. Yes, yes. Well, it has its fun bits. Baby for you. I see some people out there who could really use a child. Hmm. How about the date when I made my first million? Also, friends, uh, having a child is not guaranteed to make your life better. Whoa. In fact, it will make your relationship satisfaction go down. Well, of course, the whole system is rigged. But I mean, I'm just one person. What could I do about it? We can unrig this game, but you gotta believe it's possible first. Light. I wonder what we're, okay, what are we trying to associate the light with? Alright, we got another baggage over there. Your bad idea. Yes, got the duffel bag tag. Uh, let's see. Have you ever done research or had a discussion on how living in this town impacts people, particularly in adolescent development, new generation of families develop a place that's primarily. Uh, no, I have not. Uh, Morbitoth. I don't do research anymore. I got out of academia. Yep. Hmm. Oh, shit. for crying. I want to get the baggage. Yep. Also, 
also those of you that stuck through the raid, everybody who's hanging out, if you're watching the VOD, if you're watching me live, thank you for taking time out of your night or day to watch my stream. Appreciate it immensely. over there. Oh no! Damn it. Right, we're gonna wait for that one to go away. Unless actually I can lift it. Well, that worked out. What up, coping strategies? Uh, useless. Defiance. Defiance is effective. I'm not missing stuff. Deeper. Go. Go. All right. So defiance and useless are connected. I want to hear her conceptual. Okay. So defiance needs to be switched to effective. change things unless we try and we have a winner looks like this time it's not double zero what we 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 won well i guess miracles do happen you're telling us oh we are so happy well i'm dead here young man I don't know what you did, but I'm a man of my word. We don't need it, because... You're rich? Yes, but we don't like to talk about it. Oh, look at our little jackpot. When does it start fulfilling all of our unachieved ambitions? <laughs> right after we use its identity to hide our excess taxable <laughs> income. Oh, it will be so nice to have a couple of spare kidneys around the house. It's just a mental baby. Just a mental baby. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I wasn't ready for how concise and perfect that was going to be. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> as many of you can attest to, this is a legitimate phenomenon. I applaud their self-awareness around that. Nobody on planet Earth, no human, can accomplish everything because time is finite. You will always have things that you missed out on. You will always have things that you didn't do. There will always be different paths you could have taken. That is just the reality of living your life. When parents are not mindful of the role that a child is going to play in their life, they can fall into a pit of seeing children 
as an extension of themselves where there is no differentiation that's made between the two and that child the child is essentially a parent's second chance and that the child has an opportunity to learn from the mistakes or the perceived mistakes of the parent. Your child doesn't have the context or the things that you push on them if you are a parent that does this. And a lot of times parents struggle to see their child or children as autonomous humans that you can certainly shape through nurture but you don't have full control over their environment. And your child may develop interests and convictions that are separate from yours. Parents that live a life of regret and see their children as an extension of themselves will often resist their child's autonomy and can cause significant damage because the child has no context for understanding that extension and is certainly not going to empathize with the parent in the way that the parent would expect them to because they're a child. It is okay to express interest, to get your children involved in things, to give them a chance, but you need to listen to your child's interests. And you need to ensure that you see your child as an autonomous human that one day will be an adult. That will live their own life and that they are not in you are not entitled to your child being an extension of something that you didn't accomplish or that you see as being a loose end that's not your child's job and if you have a child for that purpose you are arguably an asshole you should have a child because you want to facilitate that child's autonomy that child's hopes and dreams you can have influence on them without completely controlling them so though that comment is comical it's also very true and they guarantee you there are people who are watching this right now whether live or through the VOD where you have probably had that experience as the child of a parent you may even recognize that you as a parent did that uh, some parent, Many parents do it without realizing it. So I do have to give those parents one piece of credit, which is that they are self-aware of that process. And hopefully they can use that insight to do differently and to facilitate their child's development as they are, as opposed to as an extension of what they believe they should be. Your child is not a reflection of your social status. Your child is not a reflection of you. How selfish do you have to be to see it that way? Like, yes, you're responsible for them. But they're a separate human. You wouldn't want somebody to do that to you. Don't do it to your child. It will breed resentment. Almost guaranteed. Okay. I got a gazillion dollars. She said three gazillion. One lucky card does not make three of a kind, sir. Yep. She said three gazillion, big dog. So we're going back in. Cardiology. Be like Zelda, roll around. All right. What is cardiology a metaphor for? gazillion to one you say so if i bid on hearts and one i'd win a gazillion dollars right hey where'd you go okay that's the last bet runners to your starting gates prepare the patient for the exam and they're off <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. oh my god i love this so much diamond days 
Dropping down. Spade in full seems to be fading. Diamond Days dropping down. Coming up to the finish line. And it's Spade in full taking the trophy. Congratulations to the winners on their bets. Runners, take a hot five in the back. Uh, so can I go back to my room now? Sorry, sir. The doctor wants more tests. <laughs> Doctors and nurses, place your bet. Next race will be oh starting God. soon. Okay, that's the last bet. Runners, to your starting gate. Prepare the patient for the exam. And they're off. <laughs> What's up, baggage? I'd like to make a bet. Sure, which runner suits you this evening? to join the winners club good luck with that and they're off coming up to the finish line and it's spade in oh. that's weird most people usually win every time well try again bye okay that's <laughs> the last bet Runners to your starting gates. All right. The patient for the exam. Something tells me that heart's not going to work. So let's go explore a little bit here. Why is heart taped here? Sure, you should be racing. My doctor told me I have to stay off this leg. Oh, he's also my boss, and he told me that if I miss another race, I'll get fired. Sounds like America. <laughs> well, you better get back out there then. Oh, no. This isn't anything that Hart doesn't already know. Is it possible for me to race for you? What if I raced for you? What? Y you do that for me? Hell yeah. yes, but I can't race looking like this. Well, there's a changing room up there. What am I saying? That's impossible. This is just something I need to do. Look at Diamond getting after it. Damn. Hi. Oh, sorry, I don't talk to jokers. How's it going? Please don't break my concentration. I'm visualizing my next victory. <laughs> really great tactic from a performance standpoint, by the way. Visualization. One of the core principles of sports psychology. You can, to an extent, bias your performance by the way in which you visualize it going forward. There is a... Uh, confirmation bias is a very powerful thing. We often talk about confirmation bias as taking people in bad directions. Basically, you assume something bad is going to happen, you visualize that bad thing, and then you look for data to support it. Well, you can work the reverse. It takes a lot more discipline and intention, though, where you can visualize something happening performance-wise, attend to the details in that scenario that you've constructed, and then use confirmation bias when performing to continue to fuel that narrative and what you visualized. Golfers do it a lot, as do tennis players. 
and it can be a really powerful tool. So I actually really like what Spades is doing there, especially if they're doing it with significant intention and a lot of discipline. What are you doing, Good Club? Hustle out there. It's a private locker room. Racers only. Okay. It's a change in impossible. We need to switch this up. We're gonna change it too. Oh, different. Oh, it actually could press. Same runner. I can do this on my own. I don't need anybody's help. I can't need anybody's help. I hope that's not true, because I ask for help all the time. Sure, I'm not missing anything. Get out of here. Winning. Help. Then again, life is more of a relay race than a wind sprint. Sometimes you need to know when it's time to pass the baton. Yeah. All Give it to me. All I have to do now is place a bet on hearts, and then take hearts place in the race. Right. Hey. Let me run this race for you. You're still willing to do that for me? Yep. No! Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. Jeez, that would be shitty. Yes, you rest that leg. Oh my gosh, you're a lifesaver. I got the disguise. I'll put it on after I go place the winning bet. Isn't that a conflict of interest? Yes. No! As long as I don't tell you who I'm betting on. Oh, I... See, that makes sense. It's a little bit of a stretch there, Rez. <laughs> Although I guess I'm betting on myself. Runners to your starting gate. Prepare the patient for the I'd like to make a bet. Sure. Which runner suits you this evening? Give me hearts, baby. I gotta follow my heart. What? Haven't you seen the odds? Hey, yes. No one can lose forever, right? Easy, Brad. <laughs> you don't know hearts. Okay, that's the last bet. <laughs> yeah. Close place. enough. Close enough. We got this. Oh shit. Go, baby, go. Go. Has gotten into hearts content. Come on. Huh? Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.
Let's go. And it's heart's content in first place. I don't believe this. A gazillion and one miracle, and you all got to see it. Even if you didn't win, you have to admit, we're all winners here today. Hell yeah. Not me. Oh, you're done. No more races today. Sorry, we're broke after that race, which reminds <laughs> me. Oh, no. Don't forget to tip your nurses, you cheapskates. Oh, no. It came out of a urine sample. <laughs> I have two gazillion dollars. Please put the third gazillion on my room tab. Sir, we are offended that you would imply that we would allow mere double gazillionaires into the High Rollers Lounge. Fair enough. I'm making progress, but it's time to wrap this up once and for all. Sasha and me are in danger while I'm here gambling. Alright, so we go to the doctor's only. I'm a doctor. I want to burn every painting in yep. this entire game. Yeah. Don't gamble with your health. <laughs> Laughs an American. Oh, a vault! What do you got for me? Ooh, okay. Breaking Dr. Potts. Plagiarism. Golf. Women. Bad. Race. Oh, boy. All right, so she's behind him. Assuming these are all the things that he cares about. Race, women, guilt, bad, golf, medicine, good. Oh boy. Running through with his underpants. Oh no. What did she do? All the Psychonauts. We want you for the Psychonauts. She looks upset. So she mind melded him. He went crazy. She called it in. Brought the Psychonauts in. I guess they tried to calm him down. And then they recruited her. Oh my god. This does not look favorably upon the Psychonauts. Yeah, screwing with people's minds isn't cool, man. So I wonder if there's an immense amount of, like, guilt that she struggles with. That's the doctor's only. Did I just go into the same place? No, this is records. Oh, what's up, baggage? I think I hear something. Yay! And the emotional baggage makes me so happy when we can actually attend to it. All right, I've got three upgrade things available, so let's see. Gain an additional blast. Um, right.
it's... Hey. I like Satan's. Sweet. Huh? All right. Clearing this place out. I love it. Done. I think we have to go to the pharmacy. Yeah. What you got for me, pharmacy? This ought to be interesting. Belinko! Hell yeah! How elaborate this is. This is so awesome. So the music is just literally perfect. figure it out what do we got here hi can I play welcome to Palinko game of luck and skill can you get the patient to take her bitter pill skill it looks like it's all luck oh it is but it takes skill to do it and avoid a serious head injury oh how do I good luck No way. Let's get this medicine to the stomach. <laughs> no way. All right, we can do this. We can do this. Careful in there. Yep. All right, got to get it to the stomach. <gasps> Where's her this reminds me of uh, Sonic 2, like playing the spin ball. <sighs> no, 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 no. Passes it. What a ripoff. That machine is broken. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. The Sore Losers Club is down the hall. <laughs> wow. He looks like an injectable. But really, he's just a pill. What are you two doing here? You think we're going to let you go alone and get all the extra credit points? I'm just here to gamble. Well, stay away from this game. There's only one spot on the board that pays out, and it's totally blocked. It's like her heart is in the wrong place. Hey, I'll bet I could... Morris? Norma? I realize that we have Batman interns with us. Whoa. Where'd they go? Don't give up, man! You'll never win by quitting! Yeah, it's all just a matter of betting on the right color. Don't listen to him, Sonny. Come talk to me if you want some true wisdom.
we gotta figure out how to get up there again. Let's talk to these guys. What's up, dude? What do you got for me? Uh, looks got nothing to do with it, son. Agreed. I win with my brains. I got math on my side. A formula for victory. All right. The new Wouldn't victory. the wisest choice be, you know, not gambling? Yes, it would. Maybe you should quit while you're ahead. Who says I'm ahead? I've sunk so much money into this machine and can't just leave it all behind. Sunk cost fallacy absolutely kills people with gambling. Again, when you lose a lot of money, people are always operating on the idea that the next one can be a winner. And believe it or not, what that person just said is something that you will hear a lot of people who struggle with gambling say, which is that I have devoted so much money to this machine, it's got to pay out to me eventually. You hear this with slot machines more often than anything else. Just because you've sunk a huge amount of money in doesn't mean that you're entitled to a victory. Again, it's a false construct that we create to try to make meaning out of entropy. It, we, we try to bring order to entropy. This is why, if you're going to gamble, you should go in only with the amount that you are willing to lose. And once you lose that amount, you walk away and you chalk it up to entertainment. So, a lot of times what happens is people hit that threshold or they go in without one and they'll keep going. If you go in there and say, I've got 200 bucks. As soon as I lose this 200 bucks, I'm willing to lose it. Never go into gambling assuming you're going to win. Winning is a bonus. You could go in with the idea of if I win X amount, I will stop because I'm ahead. And it's okay to walk away while you're ahead. In fact, you should walk away while you're ahead. But go in knowing the amount that you're willing to lose and create what kind of whatever kind of boundaries you have to create in order to make sure you follow through with it. Actually, I think it's important to know when to quit, especially when playing Blue Loki with your grandma. Okay. See what this other person has to say. Blue, red, blue. Sounds like you've got a method. The secret is you have to listen to the colors. Let the rainbow of lights lead you to the pot of gold. Decisions and colors. Uh, that doesn't sound like a smart way to make decisions to me. No, not at all. Okay. There are some misguided ideas floating around this room. I wish I could help them make smarter decisions. <laughs> yeah, dude. Sometimes the path to enlightenment is not straight and simple. Whoops. Now I'm just reinforcing their old bad thought patterns. That's not going to get me anywhere. Quitting in wisdom. Yeah. Maybe I should just give up. Smart people don't try. I just think there are a lot no, of wise decisions. decisions going on in here. Yeah. There we go. The trick isn't just making decisions, but making the right one. Ah, a little judgment. There's some progress. I wish they knew that sometimes walking away is the best choice. I want another shot. Okay, I'll just need you to bend over and... No, at the game. <laughs> really? Okay. Nervous? Not really. Good, that's good. Sometimes you need to swallow nope, your nope, feelings. Nope, nope, nope. Go this way. I want to collect all the things. That's part of why I'm doing this. Also, I want to get a layout of the board, right? We can only make the right decision when we're informed about what we're working through. All right, let's go this way. Nice, but it's not the stomach. Ah, no, come on. I'll never be a gazillionaire with cheap payouts like that. Okay. love these noises so much which by the way another thing about casinos is casinos are completely designed to 
get you excited, to get your human brain excited. You call that a jackpot? The noises are super desirable. They're at the perfect volume. The lighting is designed to make it so you don't know what time of day it is. They make the carpet and ceiling super ugly and intricate so that you look at the pretty lights. The whole thing is, desi is designed to keep your gaze at the gambling machines. Casinos are also very poorly laid out so that you get lost and you stick around. You are served free beer because then your inhibitions go down. All by design. I need another chance. I didn't realize tonight oh, was going to be a conversation about I mean, gambling, but here we forever, are. Right? I mean, I guess we were at a casino, so. Yeah, you got to be careful with the free drinks. It's to get you to start making poor decisions. Because your judgment is one of the first things to go when you have alcohol in your system. The, I want the pill that's over here. Yeah, right? So the heart is blocked. Yep. Alright, so we have to go do our little alternative universe thing. Which I wonder if that means we actually have to walk away. Maybe we don't actually get a gazillion dollars from this. Most important thing is to know when to quit. Yep. I should have finished my degree. I could have been saving lives instead of pinching pennies. Whoops. Now I'm just reinforcing their old bad thought patterns. That's not going to keep me there. All these garish colors make me want to die. <laughs> All these garish colors make me feel like I just went colorblind. I've cut my own paycheck for a while. No, don't do that. What I need is for one of those TV judges to tell me what to do. There's nothing wrong with quitting, as long as you do it with proper judgment. Bit of a heavy-handed... I guess it's not really bad to quit, if it's the right thing to do at the moment. Let's go gambling with us. We both have $20 and play a penny per Isn't hand in video poker and we get a free drink or two while we're there. Moderation. That's that's now the way to that's do it. The real path to Katie, for sure. For sure. Alright. Boom. Boom. Here we go. Through you know the heart. What? I think the only way to win is to know when to play and when to stop. Boom. Swallowing your feelings sounds bad, but really, who wants to hear about those ugly things anyway? Uh oh, Even though making new connections is what got me into this mess, I think making a better one here is actually the only way out. Yeah, suppressing feelings? That's not Dr. Mick approved. <laughs> One of those I weird... think I need to upgrade my mental connection game before I can connect ideas like that. got to go to feelings, right? Yep. You know, yeah. 
I think holding down all these feelings is giving me a bit of indigestion. True story. That can happen. You can experience physical symptoms of emotional suppression, oh, like indigestion. That feels Actually bad. real. Now that her heart is in the right place, I should have better luck if I play the game again. Nice. I need another chance. Of course. I mean, you can't lose forever, right? Not with wisdom on my side. No tickling. Bing, bing, ding, 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 ding. Go I'm to the stomach. Doctor, but I know what I like. I like that heart much better in its new location. I'm Damn. Sure. Thank you, Doctor. What? That can't happen. How did you do that? A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, I guess. Oh, you're going down all right, once the boss finds out about this. But you ain't taking me with you. I'm out of here. Who's the boss? At least this one didn't come from a cup of urine. Take it. Take it, Raz. Let's go. What? Get out of here. Give me that gazillion. Sorry, the High Rollers Lounge only Triple admits... gazillionaires, of course. I would belong to no lesser club. Now, let me in before I call my expensive lawyer. <laughs> well then, please come in, sir. If you're willing to take the risk. Oh, I am. Let's go. Goggles on, baby. Agent Foresight, I'm sorry. This is all my fault. Aquato, I hope you're not trying to take credit for my brilliant idea for solving all the Psychonauts' financial problems. Yes, I mean, no, I mean... As if this needs to be said, gambling is not the way to solve financial problems. Gambling creates financial problems. You are not an anomaly. Gambling is designed to keep you held in and to exploit you. No matter what an institution tells you. I made some bad connections in your mind, and there was some sort of a bad idea chain reaction, and now... Yep, now we're going to get attacked. Yep. Oh, this is going to be nuts. Who are you calling a bad idea? I am the sweetest of dreams, the spirit of unbeatable optimism. I am the ultimate victory of hope over mathematics. I am the Lady Lucktopus, but you can call me Lucky. You are my own creation. I command you to stop. <laughs> that sounded so much cooler than Sasha said. It's time to see what the cards have in store for you. Oh, shit. But don't worry, I'm a fair dealer. Are you? Although, I do like to keep a couple of jokers up my sleeve. Can you believe we got caught in? So embarrassing. We can't get to our smelling salts. We can't leave her mind. Don't let us die in here, man. You know what happens when you die in someone's mind, right? You can die inside mine. You pee your pants! Get ready to play! This could be your lucky day! But I wouldn't bet on it. If I only I could get to my you know. yummy, but I feel like your streak is over. Ooh, that's not good. Young man, 
Don't you know it's rude to say... <coughs> 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 So I gotta grab these when she chucks them at me. A bomb? Well, cheer up. Maybe you'll get a pair. Well, I hope you bet on bomb, because that's what you got. Ugh. Yeah. Oh. Hang on, Drop him. Nice shot, Goober. All right, let's free the others together now. No, you two get out of here before she cards you again. Try to wake up Ancient Foresight in the physical world. You sure? Yes. Now beat it. Kids got some spirit. I think he just doesn't want us to see him cry. Just admit I'm smarter than you. House always wins. Come on. Seven. How much did I lose? Doesn't matter. Still in the game, still in the game. Uh oh. <laughs> no time to walk away. After all, I still have some valuable cards here. Ooh, she blocked off the thing. Ooh, I need to cover up that blemish. It's like a Destiny Raid I boss. I think I should just card you like the rest. Looks like it's time for a fresh down. What are you looking at? Holy shit, it actually is like a Destiny Raid boss. Ooh, you're in luck. That's a losing way to play her. Please do it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Here we go. That's my friend right there. It's about to <laughs> That was amazing, man. Now let's save the others. We need to get back to the suite and help Sasha and Mia. But clean up the rest of your mess, okay? My mess, Got huh? Me there, Norma. I guess it kind of is my mess. Everything on red. I have a graduate degree. <laughs> no, you me can't too. kick me out. I, uh, this is. Sorry, Hart. Hey. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I was just faking it. Right? Right. Hey, where'd everybody go? <laughs> I still have you guys, right? You got it, Chief. <laughs> On second thought, where's my shredder? Ask Mutant, hurry. The bad thing is, Relux was a take down The system is just... Jackpot! The boy has kicked the middle That's jackpot! Let's kickstart that heart! Oh shit! <laughs> ah. ah yes! Who's awake now? I sure am! Already done it! Why you have played so long? Sight less! Oh! <laughs> Is prone to excess. Oh, bomb time. Oh my 
God. Okay, you can actually borrow my board for a whole week for that shot. Woo! You two go help the others. I just have one last thing to do. Come on, I understand. He doesn't want his friends to see him take a life. I caused this mess, and now I'm going to finish it. Hit me. I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll. Oh, why? Why would you destroy me? Me, the answer to all your problems. What the? Who put this here? It's all wrong. It's all wrong. Tear it all down. Wait, what are you doing here? You can't see this. Agent Forsyth, hold on. I can explain. This is actually... This is all my fault. I used mental connection to... To change some things in your mind. To make some new connections. I didn't think... You did what? I... I'm sorry. That explains... Everything. I knew I wasn't this stupid. I mean, I have a degree in mathematics, you know? <laughs> I thought I was really losing it. But it turns out my only problem was you. Wait, wait. I, I can explain. I... You're right. I knew it was wrong the second I did it. I'm ashamed of myself. I violated your trust and very idea of what it means to be a psychonaut. I guess I'm not ready for this after all. I'll pack up my stuff. You don't need to do that. You're right. I don't even have any stuff to pack. I'll just go. No, listen. You're right about violating trust. What you did was wrong. Very wrong. But, truth is, I pulled a similar stunt once. Really? Only the person whose brain I messed with, I couldn't put them right again. They had to call in the Psychonauts to undo what I did. That's when I met Truman Zanato. He taught me how to apply my powers in a responsible way. The Psychonauts. We're not here to change people's minds, Raz. Not here to fix people. We're here to help people fight their own demons. The ones they already have. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. You're not at camp anymore, Raz. People could live or die on this mission. <gasps> the mission! No one to fold them. What a great... Zip it and gather round, class. Where did you... Did you not hear the first thing I said about zipping it? Stand by for instructions. Shoehorn, dustpan, this is teacup. Agent Forsyth, where have you... Shoehorn, I reversed the main fan. Let it push you back down the vent and then climb into the hatch labeled 375H. Then move forward and take two consecutive rights. You'll be able to drop down directly into the office from that spot. Teacup? Dustpan. Tell the guards you're a contractor from Halifax Security. You're here to inspect the card shuffling machine. Your clearance code is 99853. I have the real inspector trapped in the fourth floor bathroom, so avoid that area. Roger that, Teacup. Shoehorn, I've disabled all side detectors and inhibitors.
But it's only temporary, so be quick. Check. I'm entering the office. This is Dustpan. I'm sweeping the guards out of the area. The key reader is operational. Got a room number for a shoehorn? Yes, it's the North Tower Penthouse 3896. But can we get up there if the side detectors come back online? I have an operative in position. You and Dustpan pull out and return to the pantry immediately. Did you catch that intel, Egg Beater? Teacup, this is Egg Beater. I'm in position and have a visual on the North Tower penthouse. All right, time to make the omelet. Roger, on the move. Your classmates are on their way to offer support. Did you not hear that last part either? Hell yeah! We assault the tower in part three. Thank you so much, VOD watchers, for making the effort to watch through this all the way. If you made it to the end, please consider liking the video with a thumbs up and subscribing. Follow me on social media down below, and I would love it if you left a comment on today's episode. This was really wonderful. I like the little point there at the end about how our job is not to change people's minds. Our job is to help them fight their own demons. Uh, that is actually a really cool metaphor for therapy. A lot of people go to therapy thinking, or they perceive therapy as something where a therapist pushes their own personal agenda on them and defines for them what is problematic or what isn't. And that, aside from some uh, minority circumstances is not true. We work to help pe to understand people's minds, what makes them tick, how they think about things, and we work with you and your own experience. We combine our expertise with your experience to help formulate a treatment plan that's going to work for you. A good therapist does not push their agenda on a client. A good therapist use what, uses what they know to help a client make better sense out of what's going on for them. So it's a very important lesson for Raz to learn, and I'm glad that Forsyth made that point. Thank you for watching episode two. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was great fun. I will catch you in part three. I'm looking forward to it.